When does Jesus say, who, who, who gets eternal life? The person who believes. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. Whoever believes has eternal life. All right. So now this has, you guys speak English. And so I'll just use the English context. Has is present tense, right? Has is present tense. So if you believe, you presently have it, right? So believing is essential. You have to believe. Now, some of you guys think that you've got to have, you got to believe and do four other things to go along with this. You got to believe and do this and that or whatever. No, if you believe. Now, implicit in believing, guys, implicit in believing is that you have a repentant heart. So you have to repent, okay? That goes without saying, okay? Uh, to be a believer, you have to have been baptized in the Spirit. Paul tells us that every single believer has been baptized into the body by the Spirit. Whether a person has been believing for one day, one minute, one hour, one year, one month, uh, one decade, all of those believers have been baptized in the body. The key identifying mark of a believer is the Holy Spirit. Okay, so now, so if a person believes, he has presently eternal life. But the question on the floor was, if a person continually believes, will he have eternal life? Will he ever um, lose his salvation? And the answer is no. So now the next question is, is, but does a believer, does a true Christian continually believe? Yes, a true Christian continually believes. I believe that Christians abide. Christians continue to abide. I think that there are warning passages that tell us to make sure, hey, if you're not enduring, if you're not abiding, if you're not bearing fruit, then guess what you're not? You're not a Christian. Because he tells us to check, to see, to make sure. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, we're going to find out in a little bit that God has already said that all the believers that get the Holy Spirit, that all the believers are going to continue in him, that all the believers will never depart from him. That's what God said. Before we even get to the cross, God said when he does this, this is what's going to happen. And he cannot mean, God doesn't mean that uh, he's speaking about after we get to heaven. Who who makes the argument that you could possibly forfeit your salvation when you get to heaven? So according to this passage, though, if you believe you have eternal life. Let's go back to it. I want to see where the condition is. Does, does Jesus put a condition? Uh, no, we don't see any conditions placed on here. If you go from 35 on up, matter of fact, we don't want to go to 37, 35, 37, because people get a little bothered by what's, what's stated there, because it looks like, um, God is kind of more in control. But according to verse 47, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes. Now, the point that I'm trying to make about the believing, I said that Christians enter into a state, into a continual state of believing. You enter in and you keep believing. Because something happens that causes you to keep believing. Something happens that causes you to keep walking. He's greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, the Holy Spirit. He causes you. If you don't, this the, the this is the crazy part, I think. And I'll get back on topic. But I often wonder, though, when people who believe that you can lose your salvation, people who believe that you can walk away, what in the world does the Holy Spirit do in a person who has salvation and then forfeits and then walks away? What's the, That's a weak Holy Spirit, I think, to me. If the Holy Spirit is just sitting there, just chilling. If the Holy Spirit is just sitting there chilling, I wonder what Bob is going to do today. Boy, Bob, don't go over there. Bob, don't mess with her. Bob, don't this. Bob. The Holy Spirit is just, is, is the Holy Spirit along for the ride? Is, 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 is that what we're saying? The Holy Spirit is just along for the ride? Or is the Holy Spirit active? What? You cannot ask for and focus on the power of the Holy Spirit, but the power of the Holy Spirit is weak and feckless in you. That's why he says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That's why he says, that's why he says, he who began a good work. Oh, by the way, the Holy Spirit is God. He who began a good work, he's faithful to complete it, to see you through, to get you to the finish line. The Holy Spirit has to be something in you. My God, if, if the Holy Spirit can't hold me, can't have any influence in my life, then I don't need the Holy Spirit. You don't need the Holy Spirit if he's not going to do anything. If you just take it up. If Satan is active and messing with us, how come God ain't? That, 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 that's the part that just blows my mind. Some of you guys who are into the move of the Spirit, not inside of you, though. 
Some of you guys are only into the move of the spirit when the drums are going, the guitar is playing, the organ is playing. That's it. That's the only time that you feel the move of the spirit. But you're not in, in, as far as the move of the spirit in you. Well, you don't have the spirit. It's just what it is. And this is what Paul says. Every man ought to examine himself to make sure he has it. How do you examine yourself? How do you know that you're a believer? Because you're not believing, you're not enduring, you're just doing what you want to. That's how you know. That's how you examine yourself. If you are walking in a way that's unbecoming, that's not like Christ, I don't mean, you know, you once or twice. I'm saying you live a lifestyle of sin. If sin is, is what you do often, that's who you are, that's how you live, that's how you get down, then you're not a Christian. You never entered into this state of continual believing.